What does it mean to pray according to God's will? I'll share with you my struggle and just diving into this. And what does this mean? Should I pray for God's will? Should I pray for my own will? Should I pray for him to pass if that's God's will? Or if it is, is it possible for a dad to pray in that way? So this is where we kind of came to this conclusion. We can get wrapped up in what the end of the will is for our lives or what the outcome is that we miss out on doing the God's will in the waiting. So I'm so worried about what God's going to do at the end of it that I'm not doing the will of God for the, the journey of it. And, and so we went into what is, what is the will of God for my life right now? And we got into 1 John five fourteen, And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, let me say that again. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hears us. He, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we, are, that we desired of him. So the first thing is, up front, whatever's on your heart and mind, the Bible is making it clear you can ask him anything. You shouldn't go to him with hesitation. You shouldn't go to him with being reluctant about it. You can go to God with anything. That, that took, for me, that helped me because I'm sitting there thinking if I'm praying wrong because I'm praying for healing, and God just put rest on my heart just saying, ask me. Don't sit there worried about praying wrong. Ask me. What's on your heart? And I say that to every Christian. What's on your heart and mind? And so don't sit there and say, well, what if it's not God's will? Do you know if it's God's will? I don't know. So keep asking him. And I'll prove that as we go through this. The will is just, uh, it, it's the purpose. It's the decree. It's the desire. It's the pleasure of God. So our prayers must line up with the character and the pleasures of God. God will not answer prayers that go against his word. God will not answer prayers that go against his character. God will not answer prayers that go against his mission. He just won't. So if you sit there and say, man, I can't stand my neighbor. I, I hope they do go to hell. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that sounds, but and you're a sinful flesh like that. That God, God's not, that goes against the will of God because he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So you've got to understand that there are certain things that if it goes against the will of God or the plan of God or the outcome of God, God's not going to answer. So in 1 John 5, 14, it says, if we ask, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask. So we got into what is the will of God? So I broke this down into these points. God's will is for you to ask. I don't know the outcome, but I know God's plan for my life and your life right now is to boldly come before the throne of grace that you might receive grace and help at the time that, uh, to help in the time of need. So... Matthew 7, 7, just to reiterate this, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Those things are continuous action. You knock and keep on knocking. You ask and keep on asking. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, do what? Let your requests be made known unto God. That's what he's saying. What, what is God saying? Come to me with. He said, I want to hear your request. I want to hear what's on your heart. I want to hear what you're burdened about. So when I go into that prayer closet or I, I kneel down next to my bed or I'm with my family, I am making my request be known unto God. God, I have a sick kid. God, I have family that is in trouble. God, I have friends in church. God, I, I'm making my request be known unto God. Am I doing anything wrong by that? Nope, because he invited me to make my request. And the peace of God, that's what I was missing when I was going through this. Because when I was just praying for the will of God, and I didn't understand that, I, I didn't have peace about that. In the peace of God, when you make your request be known unto God, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep and guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So God gave us a promise with that. He said, you ask, and the closer you get to God, the more you're going to understand God, the more he's going to give you peace. If it was only about trusting the will of God, then God would not tell us to just trust. He would tell us just to trust. He would not tell us to ask. And that's if, if it was all about trusting the will of God, our prayer life would be simply about just trust him, trust him, trust him. Lord, I trust you. Help me to trust you. And, and we would leave out the ask. God's desire for you is to ask. Second thing, we'll get into the new stuff here in a minute. God's will is for you to ask with your heart's desire. Notice how many times it talks about the specifics. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will. He heareth us. 
And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have his petitions that we desired of him. It is the specific things on our hearts and minds. So people have come up to me in my journey and said, you should just pray for whatever God's will is to happen of this. Like, like, you know, I'm praying for healing. And they said, don't pray for You don't know if that's God's plan. God's plan might be for him to have uh, the thorn in the flesh like, uh, like Paul did. And I'm thinking, that's true. But I'm not going to say, dear God, and if you want him to have cancer forever, I'm, no, I'm still going to go back to what is my request. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, dear God, I, I, I need a raise, but I'll take a, a you know, deduction of my raise. You're not going to do that. You're going you're gonna to pray your heart's desire. And, and it's, it's cool that when we read this, we understand that God delights in hearing our heart's desire. I'm not going to go into it, but I kind of reiterated that with like being a dad and going up to my kids and saying, what do you want for your birthday? Whatever. What do you want? <laughs> Tell me what you want. I want to know what you want. So if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that our petitions, our desires, our requests that we have desired of him. Number three, God's will is to strengthen your faith through prayer. Ask and it shall be given to you. So we'll slow down here in a minute, but I want you to see that there is a response. I have said this before, and I, I debate back and forth on this. If, it, if it's something according to God's will, I don't believe you truly have to beg for it. Have you ever heard people say, I'm begging God for this right here? And, and I, I think there needs to be fervent prayer, and I think there needs to be something that we get into later that we talk about how to pray. Pray by faith, pray with fervency, the prayer uh, of the just and, and you know, living in obedience, that your prayers not be hindered. There's a lot of things of how to pray. But I, if my kid was in trouble, my kid would not have to beg me to help them. And I think we can have a, the wrong understanding of God. There's a difference between fervent prayer and, and, and the difference of having to beg God. God delights in answering your prayers. God delights in answering your prayers. He loves it when we're saying, I can't do this. We go to our God with a heart of surrender and we raise up our hands saying, God, I can't do this. I need your help. I need your help. In reality, there's often times that God's just waiting to ask. He takes pleasure in asking. Um, the same way that dad or mom takes pleasure in meeting their kids' needs. It's like, well, what do you need? I'll get that for you. No, don't worry about it. No, I want to get that for you. I'll, I'll take care of that. When God answers prayers, it is telling us that he hears us and he listens. So I had this thing. Me and Jenny and Morgan were driving somewhere. I can't remember where we were going. Morgan was in the back seat, and she starts, she breaks into this story. And she's telling us all these things, and then Jenny got a phone call, and then after the phone call, Jenny turns to me, and she starts telling me, and she goes, oh, Jordan just called, and this, and I said, okay, we'll get back with them, and whatever. Well, we're like five minutes past the conversation, and Morgan tells us, so she's just sitting in the back. And I turned around to Morgan, and I said, Morgan, so you said your friend did this, and you did this, and then this happened. What happened next? And she perked up, and she said, you were listening. And I was like, of course I was like, I mean, she was just like so elated, number one, that I brought it back up. And number two, I was paying attention to what she said. And I think the way that God answers our prayers is the fact that he wants us to know there's confirmation there. God works in external ways. Can I tell you guys that God does work in external ways? It is spiritual. But can I tell you that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive us of our sins? Would you say amen of that? How do you know? How do you know that it worked? True. But there was an outward manifestation that he conquered death, hell, and the grave. What was it? He came out of the grave. I am alive. How do I know that Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave? He kicked over in the grave and came out and said, see, I told you so. Amen. And you got to think, Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ covered our sins. Praise God that he died to cover our sins. But Jesus gave us a visual. What was the visual? I came out of the grave when death was supposed to take your life, God came out to show that death was taken care of on the cross. He did that. So God desires to listen, to answer. I feel like a broken record when I talk to you guys because I, am, I feel like now when I preach or do something like this, I say the word Logan like 500 times and I'm sorry. When we went into our appointment the night before, the week before, the month before, I've been praying a specific prayer. You guys are going to probably hear me preach on this coming up soon, okay? My God 
is the God of unexpected. My God is the God of unexpected. When Jesus came in the manger, why did the world not accept him? It wasn't what they were expecting. What were they expecting? A conquering king coming in on the horse. Like, I'm going to be overthrow the Romans and rescue them from the oppressed. Jesus came in a way that wasn't expected. You know, when, when Jesus brought in a rescuer through Moses and he was a baby in a bushel and he was brought down the Nile River, it's like not what we were expecting. When they went to Jericho, when they were like, we have to conquer the city, and Jesus said, or God told them to walk around the walls. What happened to the walls? They fell down. Was it what they were expecting? Nope. It wasn't how you normally do things. God is the God of the unexpected. I prayed before our last week's appointment. I said, God, a lot of times I don't know how to pray, but I know you're the God of the unexpected. Can I experience the unexpected tomorrow? I'm just telling you my heart. And when they turned around and they literally said, well, we weren't expecting this. I'm like, yes. You're like, I don't care what you're about to say, but I know it's answered prayer. I know it was. Because they said it wasn't that. God cares about your specific prayers. He does. Um, Does this mean, okay, listen to this. Does this mean if God says no, that he doesn't care? Does this mean that he does not, if God says no, that he doesn't answer our prayers? So let's let's get into this. uh, This one, God's will for us is to trust him, even if he does not answer it in the way that we ask. The truth of the matter is God does tell us no. God does tell us no. Every good father tells his children no. He's not a good father if he doesn't tell you no. Because it's, it's the truth that father knows best. Uh, we ask, we plead, we desire, we fast, we seek, and God still says no. And I say, does this mean that he doesn't care? And any dad would say, no, I, I say no oftentimes to my kids. Or a mom would say, I say no to my kids because you do care. It's not because you don't care. Does this mean that God doesn't answer his prayers? God did answer your prayers. He told you no. Now, I know this is uncomfortable for me because you guys all know my heart's desire. I am, I am not ready for a no. <laughs> I am not ready for a no. I am still the ask, seek, and knock zone of my life right now. So it always means... Listen to this. When God says no, it always means that he has something better. It always means he's doing what's best for his kids. I, I, I'm going to take some time to explain this. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God says, another way to say this, I know the plans that I have for you, the plans of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Any parent that raises kids would sit there and say, I want to see my kids successful. I want to see them go to college or get a job or be married. I mean, I'm training them to respect their parents. I'm training them to honor God with their money and to be good stewards because I I want them to have an expected end. I, I, I could tell my kids, this would be my plans that I have for you as kids. But they, I, I need them, as I tell them no to things, to know that they have to trust me as their dad. Because my kids would never say, Dad, this is going to ruin me. That's right, son, it's going to ruin you. Get over it. They know if I say no, I want them to have enough confidence in me that the only reason why dad would say no is not because he doesn't love me. It's not because he doesn't care about me. It must be because whatever I'm asking is not uh, good. I'll give you an illustration in this. Jordan, my oldest son, which a lot of you guys know, he just turned 21. Uh, He's my oldest son, full-grown adult now. When he was a teenager, he was so, Logan is so laid back and Jordan was so aggressive and like, like wanting to own a business, wanting to work all the time. Jordan used to beg me to let him quit school. I mean, beg me. He's like, dad, I'm not going off to college. Dad, I'm, I've already started my business. I'm making more money than most people. I just, he was just thriving at the time. He goes, I've got all this. He said, just the stupid school is just holding me back. He said, Dad, let me quit. I was like, no, you're not quitting school. One thing, because you're going to finish what you started. Second thing is, you'll regret it for the rest of your life that you never finished. It was like, Where, how'd you do with school? Well, I quit. Oh, you know. Third, most people say that they'll go back and finish, and they don't. I said, fourth thing, you don't know what the future holds for you. You might want to go to college. Dad, can I finish? Uh, can I quit? No, you can't. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, from everybody else being somewhat of adults, uh, adult-minded in here, did, was that a good decision? Yes. yes. Did it make sense to him? No. See, it doesn't always 
It's always for their best interest in mind. It's always to make them better. Jordan could have ran away from home to do his own thing. Would that have been the will of the father? No. Would it have been ended up well? No. Success comes when we trust the father even when he says no. Trust that he loves you. Trust that he has a great plan for you to give you that expected end. I'll give you another illustration. I, I connect with things through illustrations. I, I dated a girl in high school. Um, I was pretty serious. She was, uh, lived in the next state over. We met at camp. Uh, we dated for a year. Uh, her dad was a pastor. Uh, he, was, he was a big influence in my life. I'll explain a little bit more later than that. I was young and dumb and blind, and I thought I was going to marry this girl. I mean, I really did. I was like, I might not even go to college. I could get this job. It wasn't the plan that God had for me whatsoever. I can tell you, meeting Jenny and going off to Christian college and Bible college and surrendering to preach was the path that God had for me. So God shut that relationship down. And I remember I was like, God, this is a girl that I want to marry. And God said, no. I mean, hard no. I mean, no matter what. Now, it didn't make sense to me at the time until I met my wife, Jenny. And you know what my prayer was at that point? God, thank you for telling me no. Thank you for the no. I didn't understand at the time. And, and my heart was broken. I was all upset. And it didn't make sense to me. And I didn't know that. Thank you for saying no. Why did God tell me no? Because he had something better for me. Guys, I could tell you this. If I would have went in the other direction, I probably wouldn't be in ministry today. It would have been a complete, I was planning on community college and going into construction and all these things, but it was a matter of breaking up with her, went to Christian college, met Jenny, surrendered the preach. It was the path that God had for me. Why? God said no to give me the expected, uh, the expected end that he had for me. Sometimes, sometimes he tells us no, even if it doesn't make sense to us. When it comes to God's will, pray for what's on your heart till God says no. You know, you just say, how do I know that I'm praying for God's will? And it was Malcolm Carter. You guys know my pastor from Alabama. When I was praying for them, he said, has God told you no? I said, no, he has not. Then he said, you keep on asking him. You keep on asking him until he tells you no. Then trust the answer no. When he says no, trust the answer no. 2 Corinthians 12, 7. This was Paul talking about the no, Okay. He said, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Does anybody know what the thorn in the flesh was? No, no. no we don't. Blindness. Blindness is what most people believe, that he struggled with being able to see, and he was a preacher and wrote, and then he ends up having to have people write for him. So a lot of people believe that it was blindness, or at least struggling with his sight. So, and he, he described it as a thorn in the flesh. This is a constant pain. He was a messenger of Satan to buffet me. I felt like he was constantly beating me up through this problem. It's like, if it was reading, it's just like, I just want to read this letter from the church. I just want to read the scriptures that I wrote, lest I should be exalted above measure. So the thing is, Paul had a problem. It was a frustrating problem. So what did he do? He asked God to take it away. Do you guys know the answer to that prayer? What did God say? My grace is sufficient for thee. He said no. Three times. And he went back and God said no. He went back and God said no. So he said, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it should depart from me. And there's no question what he was asking. God, heal me of this. God, take this from me. And God told him no. But listen, it was to make him better. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly, therefore, I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. He found strength, open door, opportunity, expanded ministry through something that he was asking God a yes for, and God gave him a no. God did that with Logan when I told him no, or Jordan when I told him no to quitting school. Uh, God did the same thing with me when I was praying about that girl that I wanted to marry when I was a teenager, and I thought I was in love. He said, therefore, I take pleasure in these. Why? I understand now that God is doing something good through this. Maybe God used this pain or this problem to relate to people that he couldn't normally relate to. Maybe he saw an expanded ministry of whatever. Maybe it constantly humbled him. I, I just know that God works through the thing. God works through the, uh, the, the no's that we have in our lives. This is the second thing. It's, it's sometimes God says no, and sometimes God says wait. 
And, and I, I've learned with this, and, and I'm in that season right now. Lord, I, I want Logan to be healed. I want him to be cancer-free. I'd love to hear, I'd love him to ring the bell. You guys know what I mean by that, just in, in the cancer world. I, I took a picture of the bell one time when we were leaving the chemo floor, and I, I posted it, and I said, will you guys all pray with me that one day I get to hear this bell ring? I want to hear that he is cancer-free. But that, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not there. The cancer's way smaller and still attached to his heart. I'm not there. So I'm in that waiting. God's not told me no. God's not told me yes, but I'm in the waiting. Let me, let me put it like this. Jordan wanted, I have lots of Jordan stories, okay? And Jordan knows that I use them for these illustrations. Just so you guys know, most of the time when I use my kids as illustrations, I always ask them beforehand. I never want them to hate church because they're like, I'm just going to be a sermon illustration. So once they get out of the house, I'll have to start using Jenny. And... Uh, <laughs> I promise you, she's going to tell me no. So I'll have to just use the illustrations without F. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm not that brave. Um, Jordan wanted to get a car when he was 15. Can any parent tell me why that's a dumb idea? <laughs> you can't drive. I'm like, yeah, but dad, I could get it, and then I could start working on it and all this other stuff. And I said, Jordan, you don't understand. If you get a car at 15, what comes with having a car at 15? Well, you want to drive, but it comes with insurance. You have to have insurance, and it's going to sit out there. And the more that a car sits, the more that it's not running, and everything gets, starts dry rotting, and it just needs the tires and, everything, and all this other stuff. But I told him, I didn't tell him no. You know what I told him? Wait. I said, Jordan, it's not time yet. You are not ready for this responsibility yet. And so I just simply told him to wait. He didn't understand that. We asked God to heal Logan through the surgery. That was my goal. I tell you, you guys know, we fasted, we prayed, we sought God. I had literally thousands of people praying, thousands of people praying. I can't remember what it was. We had like five to 10,000 shares on his. I mean, it was ridiculous, all the things that God did to get. I walked in there like a, like a bold line. I, I told you, I went up to the nurse when she was, they were giving him the medicine to kind of make him loopy before he went back. And I just leaned up. I said, I just want you to know that what you're about to experience today is God. I mean, I was like, I was so, I said, you have so many people praying for you. And she just, well, I appreciate that. That's, that's good to know. And I'm, I'm serious. I said, just, I, we believe that God's doing something special to this. Then the doctor comes back. It's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. I had to close him up. We couldn't do it. Everything failed. It's worse than what we thought. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it was like, I didn't want to see that nurse. I was like, yeah, like. Like, whoa, what about that answer prayer or whatever? And I realized from that, that that it wasn't a no. It was a wait. And sometimes we're expecting God to do things in our way. We had a hotel across the street from Ohio State, the James, and all my family was there. We took up the whole lobby. They prayed through the whole thing. They were all there. And when I texted them and told them the news, and then they said, you can't see him for two hours I just walked through that door. We wept. We cried. I mean, it was just like, it was horrible. We were just so expecting that to be like this, this aha, amazing moment that we were going to have. And something came over me, and I just stopped. And I looked at them, and I said, it's not over. And I said, could it be that God's going to do something else? Now, I'll tell you, I'll be honest. And Morgan used that in her testimony a while back of just like we were sitting there, that wasn't me being hyper-spiritual. I just literally said what was on my heart, that it's not over. And I, and I believe that if, if God would have did something in that moment to heal Logan and we would have walked out of there, this whole burden on my heart to seek after God would have just kind of like, well, whew, you know when you get the answer prayer, pulls you off your knees and you get comfortable again? I don't think God's done making me uncomfortable. As much as I'd like to be uncomfortable, I would, I would pay to be uncomfortable. I don't think God's done making me uncomfortable. I don't think God's done working in the waiting in my life or in my wife's life or in Logan's life whatsoever. I think God is still working through this. So let me read this again. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. An expected end. You, you see, what was my plan wasn't God's plan. What was my plan was not God's plan. And I, and I believe that this was God's way of just saying, wait, because Jenny said to me, she said, you know what? If this would have worked and it would have gone to plan, we would have walked out of there giving praise and honor to those doctors. I said, that James Hospital is the bomb. 
But God put us into a predicament where we walked away from that saying, there's nothing more than we can do. We, we, you know, I mean, they just gave us, you guys know the story. I mean, there's, we're at a place that we don't know what to do. And then God starts doing the unexpected. Psalms 27, 14 says this, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. I say, wait on the Lord. It's not easy. I tell you what I'm talking about until you're there. I'm, I, can't, I can't stress enough how terribly uncomfortable it is to wait. For them to, I, I had a friend of mine that uh, uh, was possible had lung cancer. And they said, the only way we're going to know is we have to just wait to see if it grows because when it, unless they can get in for a biopsy and they just see a spot on a CT, they don't know. So that's, that's that waiting period of just waiting to see if cancer grows in my lungs. <laughs> like, seriously? I have to wait and go to bed every night wondering when it comes to those? So God might be telling you to wait because he's working in the waiting. God wants you to learn to trust Listen, let, me, let me give you a verse that I promise you most of you have never heard this verse ever in your life. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. <laughs> Everybody's like, are you kidding? That's the first worst verse I ever learned as a child. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So I'm going to ask you guys this hard question, okay? You ready for this? What are you trusting in? Are you trusting that he's going to answer your prayer? Or is he, are you trusting him that he's going to bring you to the expected end? Are you trusting him that he's doing what's best for your life? And I promise you, that's a lot easier for me to say than to, to, to live. That's easier for me to say than to live. It's, it's so hard. It's, let me look at another passage when it comes to this. And this, These are just passages that I read through and studied, and every time I get to something about the will of God and stuff like that, I mark it, I go back and say, what does this mean? When, you, when life doesn't make sense, okay, when life doesn't make sense and your life is falling apart and things are so hard, it says, likewise, the Spirit also helps, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray. Have you ever been there? I mean, you're just like, I have no idea what to say. Have you ever just mumbled through a prayer or wept? I, I, I have. I can tell you I have. But the Spirit itself making intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. During those times of brokenness, the Spirit ministers to us and it represents it. It's like if you've ever been parents of little kids and the kids come up to you and they're, they're hurt, that they can't tell you where they're hurt, and they're crying, and they're just sniffling and snot and just hands up, and they're just like, ah, 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 you know, whatever. You just pick them up, and you start ministering and loving on them, and, 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 they, and they, they think you're making them better. You have no idea what's even wrong. And says, it, it's, it helpeth our infirmities that we, when we don't know what we should pray. He, he represents us. He loves on us. For he searcheth the hearts and knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for them, the saints according to his will. The Spirit knows us, and the Spirit knows the mind of God, and he goes to God with our needs. But according to the will of God, he, he, he plays that intercession. He ministers to our hearts. It's, it's, God, I really want this car, okay? And God says no to us because God knows it's not what we need because we don't need a $500 payment, Okay, he, he does it according to the will of God because he knows what's best for us. Now, are you guys ready for this? Here's the verse that we quote all the time in conjunction, in conjunction to the Spirit of God interceding for us and praying for us and ministering to our hearts. This is what we trust in. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to the purpose. You can trust and know that God is working. And I preached on this in Sunday. Man, when you pray, I promise you, God is at work every single time. God does never, ever will he hear your prayers and just be like, yeah, whatever. Or I'm too busy. Or that doesn't matter to me. It might not be working the way that you're expecting, but I can promise you, God is always, always working. This proves it. You can know that all things are working together for good to them that trust God, to them that are called according to his purpose. But you know why it doesn't make sense? Because while he's working, it can be miserable. Can I, can I guys give you guys a little insight of the week that I had? So last week, um, I decided 
that I was going to fix up the gym in my basement. I'm going to get serious, and I'm going to, I'm going to, but Jenny was like, I'm not going down the basement. It's gross. It's full of cobwebs. There's spiders everywhere. It's horrible. It's miserable. I'm trying to get Logan to work out with me because his chemo just knocked him down with his health and everything like this. So I decided to strip the room and do something. So I'm going to walk you guys through this. Okay, so here's my room in the basement that I have the exercise. I stripped everything out of it, and I'm sitting there, and Jordan comes down there, and he says, Dad, do you know what would be really cool? He said, it would be really cool if you sprayed the ceiling black. And I'm like, well, that sounds easy. I think that would be really cool. I'd never did that before. I've never really used a spray gun before. I, I've never really, I had no idea what I was getting into. So I was like, well, I'll tape it off. I'm telling you, I about had a mental breakdown the next day. Here's the next day. Okay, this is me painting the ceiling black. It sprayed it on so thick that it was raining black in the room. It dripped through my drop cloths. It got on the walls. I oversprayed my walls. I got it on every ladder. I, I walked through it, and then Jenny was like, oh, I'm like, what's wrong with that? And I go upstairs. She says, you got paint everywhere. I had paint on the dog. I had paint on the door. I had paint on the front steps, the back steps, black paint, by the way. I am scrubbing this. It went through my drop cloths, and then adhered to the concrete floor underneath because it was dripping so bad. I'm halfway through this, and I turn, well, not even halfway through it. I, I'm, I'm just starting, and I turn around, the machine turns off. And I'm like, how could it be jammed already? It wasn't jammed already. It used that much paint that fast. So now I have this mess. This was day two. I had this mess, and I had no more paint, and Home Depot was already closed. So you... Uh, I know, I should have said no. But here I am, I am so, I, I, I was literally, I went to bed that night, that mess, I had to clean up everything, go back to the store. I went to Jenny and I said, that was the biggest mistake. There's nothing good coming out of it. The room feels dark, it feels black. I got paint all over, I've got to paint the floor now. I said, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I'm so miserable with it. So then the next day I get through it, okay? And then I start painting the rest of the room. And this is, this is it, almost finished right here. So I painted the top black, put in new lights. I epoxied the floor, put a cool orange accent light. And now I'm down there, and I am telling, I called up Jordan, and I said, that was so cool. I'm so glad I did what you said. <laughs> I took him pictures. He said, I told you that. I told you that. I told you that. Here's the thing. That was the expected end. Can I tell you how miserable it was to get to where I was going? And I'm telling you guys what we often think is God has abandoned us when life gets messy. When things just start getting falling apart, it doesn't add up and it doesn't make sense and this shouldn't spray like this and this shouldn't drip like this and it shouldn't be on the walls and the overspray and all this other stuff. I was literally covered because, you know, anyways, I was covered and I was just I probably kicked the dog. That's how he got black on him, okay? I was just like, I was so miserable. But the thing is, if I wouldn't have gone through the picture before, I would have never got to this. And, and so many of us want the result of, God, I want to see my kids on fire for you. And I want to see, and I've given this illustration so many before because it makes sense. Do you guys realize how you build muscle if you're working out? You, you lift weights until it gets uncomfortable and then you just quit, right? <laughs> when, when do you build muscle? Like, I can't, I can't, this is, ah, and then the, the, everybody's screaming at you, one, one more rep, one more rep, and you're sitting there, you're shaking and sweating and everything like that. It's in the struggle that you become stronger. It's through the mess that you become stronger. So let me, you say, you just got off track. And we know, we know, okay, when we pray that all things, and remember, we're not just reading this verse, when I don't know what to pray, when the Spirit of God intercedes for me, when I'm mumbling through this, and He lines me up with His will to give me an expected end, then we know that all things work together because the Spirit of God doesn't fail. To them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose, the end result is going to be God's purpose. You can trust that God is working. You're going to have confidence that God is working. It's how God works. I... Um, this is the Strong's Concordance. So I forgot about this. Strong's is the first book I ever had in ministry. Brother Fink would tell you, I mean, when you start, it's like this is, 
This was before computers. It was before smartphones. It was before I got this book. This book was given to me by a man named Aaron White. Uh, Aaron White was that girl's dad that I was dating that I asked God to let me marry. She also signed it when I was going off to Bible college and dating Jenny, and she said, have fun in college, and then she wrote her name. I'm not even going to tell you her name. That's all she wrote. Everybody else was, we know God has great plans for you, whatever. It was Aaron, when he found out that I was engaged and surrendering to preach, he called me up and he said, hey, Tony, he said, I graduated from Trinity Baptist College. Have you ever heard of it? I said, no. I said, the door, the, God just shut the door on the college that I wanted to go to. I said, it's not going to work out. It was up in North Carolina. It was called Tabernacle. I was all excited about it. It was a night school. I, it, just, it was just a mess. And God, I was two months away from getting married. And he called me up and he said, will you do me a favor? He said, will you and your fiance meet me down at the college? We were, we were in Georgia and this was in Florida right there on the edge. He said, I would like to invest in you and give you a tour of the college. We went down there. He helped me get connections to get a job. He helped me get connections to get a scholarship to the school. We were able to go to college together for uh, for one of us for free. And he did all that. And then he prayed over us and he gave me this. This was my ex-girlfriend's dad. From being at Trinity Baptist College, I was able to make the connections my senior year that there was a church in Columbus, Ohio named Fellowship Baptist Church that was looking for a youth pastor. And from that, I came to fellowship to be the youth pastor. And from that, I ended up being the lead pastor. And from that, I ended up being in this moment right now talking to you guys about prayer. Who would have ever thought that God telling me no to that girl and at that girl being in my life during that time would have led to this, that led to college, that led to here, to led to where I'm at today. You know what that is? You have to trust the no. Because all things, even the no, works together for good. To them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And it was an amazing. So let, let, me, let me wrap this up. So when it comes to praying according to God's will, his will is for you to ask him. His desire for us is to ask what's on our hearts. Bring your burdens to God passionately. I need healing. I need help. I need a new job. I need a boyfriend, I need a girlfriend, I need, I, I, I need whatever, I need a new house. I need, tell, boldly go before God. Ask specific, God takes pleasure in your specifics. God may say no, but it's always for your good. It might not seem like it, it might be black paint dripping from the ceiling mess in your life that you just say, I hate this, there's no way this turned out good, I wish that this would have never happened, and then at the end of it you're going, wow, that's pretty amazing. Okay, God can say, wait, saying that you're not ready. It's not time yet. But here's the big question that we got into. And I know I feel like I did it again. (laughs) It's 745. (laughs) Can I can I give you guys something? I just don't ever want to cheat our prayer time. So let me draw out my brain before we get into next week. Okay, because I I really I, I actually I have homework for you guys. Okay. Can you write down this? Oh, it's already in your notes. 2 Kings 20, verses 1 through, uh, go all the way down to, go down through the story. Read the whole chapter. It's all good. Okay. So tell me if this makes sense to me, to you guys. Okay. Here's the expected end. Expected end. I'm going to abbreviate. Okay. So, and this is the will of God. This is our life, to give us an expected end. You could say this is the desire of God. You could say Jeremiah and all the different passages to give you an expected end. This is God's desire for your life. Let me change colors. And along the way, there are choices. I don't know if this makes sense to you guys. There are... This is the way that life is. And I believe that God is waiting for us to do well. What is the three-letter word that God wants us to do is ask. ask. It's ask. I believe as long as it falls into this category to give me an expected end, it doesn't go against the glory or against the uh, character of God or whatever, that God is waiting for us to either give us a yes or a no or whatever. But God wants to answer along the way. And I believe that there is times 
that we miss out on blessings of a new job or different things in our life because we didn't ask him. And God desires for us to ask him. So I believe in this where it's never going to go against the will of God. But I believe that there's also times in our life that we miss out on this of what God has for us because we didn't ask and we get the other. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? It's like, how is it that you were able to get this or do this or whatever? Just like, I just went to God about it. I just started praying about it. You know, and so I think that there's a lot of things that we can have or not have according to the will of God because we don't ask. You have not because you ask not. So I believe that there's a lot of things that God wants to do for us, that God wants to bless you, and God wants to do more things, and God wants to test your faith, and God wants to send your kids to college. And you say, I just, you, you just give up in your mind, just like, we'll never afford it. That's never going to happen. I remember that was my, my life. My parents said, well, there's not a chance in the world we'll ever be able to send you off to college. But you know what? I asked God to send me to college, and God paid for my college all the way through. To this day, I have no reason why. It could have been me not going to college, but I believe that God allowed me to go to college. You know why? I ask. Do you know what I want more in our lives as a church? I believe that there's churches that have revival and don't have revival. And you know what I believe the difference is? Ask. Just asking. There's people that their kids are on fire for God and they're just apathetic and they're trying to, you know what I believe the difference is? It's asking. And I believe as long as it goes in accordance to his will, that God's waiting for us to ask. And I, if, I'm telling you, it's never, God's never going to bless if it goes in this way or out of this or whatever. But as long as it's going according to his will, that there's things that we miss out on because we don't ask. I want us to be a praying church. I want us to be praying mom and dads. Like, I, I, I pray so differently now. I just, the, 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 the weird things is, I just, I, I, pray, I pray for Logan's kids. You know why? Because it would be a miracle if, I, if Logan had kids. You guys know we had to sign off papers knowing that it's the, right at the beginning that he'll never be able to have kids for the rest of his life. And it, was, it was just, uh, people never know all the, the things behind the scenes that they just say, you have to sign off on all this. It's just, and then we had people that came up to us and said, we also had, went through chemo and they said that the only way would be adoption or whatever. And they said, we had kids naturally. How is that? Oh, we asked God. We just ask him. And God was in the seeking of him and things. And I believe that life is like this. It's like you have not because you ask not. It has to be in accordance to his will. Okay, you're not going to ask for, you know, Lord, can we steal somebody's baby or whatever. It's like like there's certain things God's going to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. 